Welcome friends to another 40k video. Today we draw on Mortarion the Pale King by David and Nandale, where Mortarion is judged by his brothers for how he brings the world into compliance. Mortarion looked and saw the planet below, burned as he had now judged it. He tried to give the people mercy, to make them compliant, but their surrender, the easy way, when they had made it, it had been a pretense. So, it had ended for them in fire. He had tried that way and now had new resolve after, after his recent journey to Galaspar a year before and where he had been made to return by the Emperor's will. There he finds Horus and Sanguinius together called to judge him. Why did Martyrian massacre the people of the planet? The air of the planet was death and so its 30 billion souls were crammed into hives the Order, who ruled, wore a form of governance on the planet, where those with power had the most built on those who had little. Slaves, a planet structured with bureaucracy and tied through mandated chemical dependencies. The way they lived reminded Mortarion of the planet he had grown upon, Barbarous. So he must destroy this Order. The tyrants that run it must meet annihilation and it would be total. Due to the number of forces that can come to support Galaspar in the system, he needs to punch through the system's defences and quickly. So he settled on, on attacking the centre of control, ignoring the 11 primary stars in the Order's empire. Asteroids are used to shield the, his fleet from orbital fortresses, and when they crack, they explode and cause more damage for the Order. The fleet then bombarded the Order's planet, and a ship... The fourth horseman descended from the burning heavens and crashed into the upper portion of the Order's hive. The Mortarion and his men formed a wedge that drove into the Order's troops. Mortarion stops and sees hundreds of tanks lined up in rows, turrets facing him, and he charged forward and through flames kept going. He jumped and landed on a tank and swung silence to cut through the turret and getting inside he killed those that looked up at him and then he leapt to the next and the next and repeated what he had done. And then a tank is flipped onto him and explodes. He gets out but is then crushed between two further tanks. He fires lantern from his holster while it's actually in the holster punching into the body of the tank. Another blast disintegrated the tank and he threw a vortex grenade. It created a rift in the materium, and a point of nothing ripped many other things apart. The sides of the rift grew and moved, taking more, eating away at the enemy forces around it. One of Matarian's other Death Guard captains, Brazin, takes orders from his Primarch to destroy the Order's generators, which he reaches and accomplishes. Matarian compares this planet to Barbarus again. And though many differences exist, the tyranny, the total oppression, and the assumption of ownership over others, that they both have in common. And this time, he, Mortarion, would free Galaspar, not the Emperor, as happened on Barbarus. Mortarion and his guard continue to move rapidly through the hive, until he sees the slaves on war chems kneel in helplessness before the Death Guard's leaders. The leaders of those that were slaves, they met a quick death. The air became a thick fog of blood and vaporised flesh. Mortarion tells his men this last bit of resistance is playing for time and then tells the citizens of Glasbar that liberation is at hand and not to fight his death guard. And then they faced a last counter move. Mutated humans, swollen skulls and third eyes, psychers. And these mutants rushed him and the floor warped with the effects of the immaterium and a spiral warp storm blocked Mortarion's advance. The storm grew wider and lashed him, and his being began to unknit, until Mortarion fought back, and fires lantern at the head of one and then more of those creating the storm. And then he fired also on the turrets that were pointing his way, and then his terminators advanced on the psychers with hand flamers, and there was nothing to face them in the chamber. The Order's reinforcements were on their way. Mortarion determines they must scale the outside of the tower where the people in charge of the Order are buried. Some would ascend, the rest would hold up the reinforcements. And Mortarion's place is with those reinforcements. 
whilst Tursus targets the command centre and takes down the generators. As Motyrin and his guard, buying time, are attacked, they threw rad bombs which went off above the Order's line drivers who died at their controls. Their guns went silent and then Motyrin charged the tanks to meet the forces that opposed them that outnumbered them, Maltarion and his 10,000 legionaries were spread out in a single rank, wide enough to meet the order, to lure them, and the bombs then wore them down, but at a distance, and the guard advanced like a scythe. And they continued to use the bombs to slow the tanks on their tracks. Running into the death zone, Maltarion used his scythe to cut off a tank's barrel and then he went into the infantry and he continued his one-man slaughter of those that opposed him. He was death, sweeping his curse through the enemy and his death guard engaged with them in his wake. He then leapt from tank to tank, disabling each with a quick strike, but he knew the numbers of the order would tip the balance in the end and it happened as the cannons fired many of them hurting his guard. So Matarian orders them, his warriors, to move to close quarters where the tank's barrels would not be able to bear on them and pick them out. And this continued, this grind, this siege back and forth of war. And then, afterwards, not long, there was silence around the Primarch as the endless thunder of tanks stopped. The sounds was victory, not for the tanks, but because his fleet still held in orbit, had broken through the blockade and now came to aid him. The death of the Order is at hand, he announced. For the moment he was alone, a single warrior, challenging millions, and the millions quailed before him. Later, he witnessed the orbital bombardment, but from the ground, it was like the work of angry gods, judgment made. A Motarian had lost half of his 10,000 to the tanks, and not long after this, Martyrian receives surrender for most of the order on Glassbar. Martyrian says there are no terms. He came here to destroy them. We then turn to Sanguinius and Horace, judging Martyrian. He says he killed them completely because one member left of the order might mean that it could return. And Horace explains to Martyrian, saying the people of the cluster will be damaged with what was done here. They don't know what freedom is, and says... They do not want to replace one type of tyranny with another. Horace says that is what their father wants, Martyrian to see. Martyrian says he would make the same actions again. He ended the tyranny, but there is always a cost. Horace says what happened will be marked as a tragedy and that Martyrian is censored. Sanguinius pleads with Martyrian to learn from what he has done. The Blood Angels Primarch, hoping that his brother will listen to him. One of the Order's slaves comes up to Martyrian later and asks to be taken into Martyrian's service and is, and Martyrian thinks in her is his vindication, one person who's been able to be freed. The grandeur of ruin, he calls it. Though she's been scarred by the battle, she's free from the Order and its tyranny. <laughs>